The readings will now be given by Amanda from Missouri. The Bible. Psalms. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. Open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Unto thee lift I up mine eyes, O thou that dwellest in the heavens. Second Kings The king of Syria warred against Israel, and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots and a great host. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Jeremiah Lift up thine eyes unto the high places. Am I a God at hand, saith the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him, saith the Lord? Do not I fill heaven and earth, saith the Lord. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Psalm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Act. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. Then there arose certain of the synagogue, which is called the Synagogue of the Libertines and Cyrenians and Alexandrians, and of them of Cilicia and of Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spake. Then they suborned men, which said, We have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and against God. And they stirred up the people, and the elders and the scribes, and came upon him and caught him, and brought him to the council, and set up false witnesses, which said, This man ceaseth not to speak blasphemous words against this holy place and the law. For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth shall destroy this place, and shall change the customs which Moses delivered us. And all that sat in the council, looking steadfastly on him, saw his face as it had been the face of an angel. And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. Be stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. Ye do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? who have received the law by the disposition of angels and have not kept it. 
When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Revelation And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Isaiah Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Lift up thine eyes round about, and see. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. Neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. But the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. I will now read correlative passages from Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures and from Prose Works, all by Mary Baker Eddy. The Revelator tells us of a new heaven and a new earth. Have you ever pictured this heaven and earth inhabited by beings under the control of supreme wisdom? Let us rid ourselves of the belief that man is separated from God and obey only the divine principle, life and love. Here is the great point of departure for all true spiritual growth. Certain erroneous postulates should be here considered in order that the spiritual facts may be better apprehended. The first erroneous postulate of belief is that substance, life, and intelligence are something apart from God. The second erroneous postulate is that man is both mental and material. The third erroneous postulate is that mind is both evil and good, whereas the real mind cannot be evil, nor the medium of evil, for mind is God. The fourth erroneous postulate is that matter is intelligent, and that man has a material body, which is part of himself. The fifth erroneous postulate is that matter holds in itself the issues of life and death, that matter is not only capable of experiencing pleasure and pain, but also capable of imparting these sensations. The material senses and their reports are unnatural, impossible, and unreal. The realization that all in harmony is unreal 
brings objects and thoughts into human view in their true light and presents them as beautiful and immortal. The sculptor turns from the marble to his model in order to perfect his conception. We are all sculptors, working at various forms, molding and chiseling thought. What is the model before mortal mind? Is it imperfection, joy, sorrow, sin, suffering? Have you accepted the mortal model? Are you reproducing it? Then you are haunted in your work by vicious sculptors and hideous forms. Do you not hear from all mankind of the imperfect model? The world is holding it before your gaze continually. The result is that you are liable to follow those lower patterns, limit your life work, and adopt into your experience the angular outline and deformity of matter models. Let unselfishness, goodness, mercy, justice, health, holiness, love, the kingdom of heaven reign within us, and sin, disease, and death will diminish until they finally disappear. The crude creations of mortal thought must finally give place to the glorious forms which we sometimes behold in the camera of divine mind, when the mental picture is spiritual and eternal. Mortals must look beyond fading, finite forms if they would gain the true sense of things. Where shall the gaze rest but in the unsearchable realm of mind? We must look where we would walk, and we must act as possessing all power from him in whom we have our being. As mortals gain more correct views of God and man, multitudinous objects of creation, which before were invisible, will become visible. When we realize that life is spirit, never in nor of matter, this understanding will expand into self-completeness, finding all in God good and needing no other consciousness. Spirit and its formations are the only realities of being. Matter disappears under the microscope of spirit. And how is man seen through the lens of spirit enlarged and how counterpoised his origin from dust, and how he presses to his original, never severed from spirit. The lens of science magnifies the divine power to human sight, and we then see the supremacy of spirit and the nothingness of matter. The material world is even now becoming the arena for conflicting forces, on one side, there will be discord and dismay. On the other side, there will be science and peace. The breaking up of material beliefs may seem to be famine and pestilence, want and woe, sin, sickness, and death, which assume new phases until their nothingness appears. These disturbances will continue until the end of error, when all discord will be swallowed up in spiritual truth. We are sometimes led to believe that darkness is as real as light, but science affirms darkness to be only a mortal sense of the absence of light, at the coming of which darkness loses the appearance of reality. So sin and sorrow, disease and death, are the suppositional absence of life, God, and flee as phantoms of error before truth and love. What mortals hear, see, feel, taste, smell, constitutes their present earth and heaven. But we must grow out of even this pleasing thraldom and find wings to reach the glory of supersensible life. Then we shall soar above as the bird in the clear ether of the blue temporal sky. 
in our immature sense of spiritual things. Let us say of the beauties of the sensuous universe, I love your promise and shall know sometime the spiritual reality and substance of form, light, and color of what I now through you discern dimly. And knowing this, I shall be satisfied. Take heart, dear sufferer, for this reality of being will surely appear sometime and in some way. There will be no more pain, and all tears will be wiped away. When you read this, remember Jesus' words, the kingdom of God is within you. This spiritual consciousness is therefore a present possibility. When we learn the way in Christian science and recognize man's spiritual being, we shall behold and understand God's creation, all the glories of earth and heaven and man. <laughs>